This video describes the new probabilistic fractal added to StatGraphic Centurion version 17. The probabilistic fractal is a pedagogical tool designed to illustrate several important concepts to beginning students of probability and statistics. The first concept is that seemingly complex outcomes can occur by very simple mechanisms. The caveat of that, of course, is that simple models can often be very helpful in predicting the behavior of even complex systems. The second concept is that stochastic processes, those are processes in which random chance helps determine the outcome, can generate very different realizations due solely to that random component. Finally, the third concept is that the extent to which the realizations of the stochastic process differ is directly proportional to the magnitude of that random component. To create the fractal, I'll go to Statlets on the Stat Graphics menu and choose Probabilistic Fractal. An analysis window will open showing a fractal initially having three splits and an inward probability of zero. Let me show you how these fractals are constructed. Let's reduce the number of splits to zero so we can see that the process begins with an equilateral triangle. The first step, I'll set splits to one, is to add another equilateral triangle to each side of the original figure. The length of the sides of the new triangles is one-third the length of the sides of the original triangle. When I increase splits to two, another triangle will be added to every side of the new figure, again reducing the sides of the new triangles so they're one-third the size of the side to which they're added. I can do it a third time, a fourth time, and a fifth time. And now you see we get what appears to be a quite complex figure using a very simple mechanism. We can get a different type of fractal if we go back to that equilateral triangle and now change the inward probability to be 1 instead of 0. Now, each time I do a split, it will remove a triangular region from the previous figure rather than adding a triangle. I can do it twice, three times, four times, five times. And again, using this very simple mechanism, you get what appears to be a very complex image. Both of the fractals I've created so far are deterministic. Each time I create them, I get the exact same image. I can change that if I return to the initial equilateral triangle and now change the inward probability parameter to be something other than 0 or 1. In fact, I'm going to set the probability to be 0 0.5. That will mean when I split the sides, I'll generate a random number and with probability 0.5, I'll add a triangle to the side. And with probability 0.5, I'll remove a triangle. You can see in this case, it added one triangle and removed two. I'll do this again, and again, and again, and again, and get a much different looking figure than I had in either the 0 or 1 probability case. Now in this case, the generation of the fractal is stochastic. It's random. And if I push the re-randomize button, 
you'll see that this stochastic mechanism leads to very different realizations based solely on the random component. The last concept I'd like to demonstrate is how much the variability amongst those realizations depends upon the extent of this stochastic component. I've returned to an equilateral triangle and now I'll bring the inward probability down from 0.5 to 0.1. This will mean each time I do a split there'll be only a 10 percent chance that I'll remove a triangular area. There'll be a 90 percent chance that I add a triangle. Now I'll increase the splits back to 5 and again you see a different sort of figure than I saw before. As I push the re-randomize button you'll also notice there's not as much variation in the images you get as there was when the inward probability was 0.5. In fact maximum variability amongst the realizations is achieved when that inward probability is set to 0.5. The probabilistic fractal illustrates important concepts that beginning students need to understand.